Hey everyone, and welcome back to the galaxy. Today, we will be learning how to use the three selective effect brushes in GIMP. The Smudge, Blur Sharpen, and Dodge Burn Tools. These tools share common options with all brush tools. Click the card in the top right corner to learn more about these options. First, let's start with the Smudge tool. The Smudge tool allows you to drag color around and blends it with the surrounding areas. As I click and drag with my mouse, notice how this effect almost emulates a finger dragging through paint. Let's explore the extra options for this tool. Rate affects how far the original point of color will be smudged. First, let me create a smudge using this 50 rate. Then, after I increase the rate, notice how more color from the original point is dragged along. Flow determines how much of the foreground color will be mixed with the smudge effect. The native setting for this option is zero, so none of this foreground color gets mixed. But as we increase this number, more of the foreground color we have selected is added to the stroke. Let's look at how the no erasing effect behaves within the smudge tool. With no erasing effect selected, transparency cannot be created. So I've cut a circle out of this image, and if I try to smudge between this transparent circle and this image, you can see that it only draws color from the actual image. If I toggle no erasing effect off, it will drag these pixels and create transparency as I keep dragging. Next, we have the Blur Sharpen tool. The Blur Sharpen tool allows us to blur and sharpen parts of our project with a brush. With the Blur option selected under Convolve Type, as I go over an area with my brush, the area becomes blurred. With the Sharpen option selected, as I use my brush, the area becomes sharper. Note that you cannot use this on areas that you've just blurred, as it will not sharpen them. Under Convolve Type, we can select which effect we want to use, blur or sharpen, as well as the rate this effect applies. Holding Command on a Mac or Control on a PC can help you easily swap between the blur and sharpen options. Rate determines how fast the effects of this tool apply. A high rate will cause the effect to apply faster and more intensely. while a low rate will do the opposite and cause a slower application of the chosen effect. Finally, we have the Dodge Burn Tool. The Dodge Burn Tool is used to lighten or darken parts of our project with the brush. This tool is great to use for small areas that need corrections. With Dodge selected under Type, pixels are lightened. With Burn selected under Type, pixels are darkened. Holding Command on a Mac or Control on a PC will switch between the Dodge and Burn effects. Let's look at some of the other tool options available. We can choose the range of pixel values the effect will look at. Under Range, we have three options. Shadows affects the darker colored portions of the image. Midtones affect the middle or average colored portions of the image. And highlights affect the lighter colored portions of your image. Let's say I want to lighten parts of this fly's back without affecting any of the darker colors like the small hairs. 
I would first make sure that Dodge is selected under Type, and then choose the option Highlights, because it will really focus on these light pixel values and ignore the ones that are darker. This works the same way with the Burn tool, only that it will darken the pixel range that you have selected. I want to darken some of the shadows on the back of the fly, so I will select Shadows under Range and paint over these areas. Notice the difference that we achieved when we selected the Shadows range versus if we would have just left this to Highlights. It's starting to darken light portions of the wing when I only wanted to darken these black lines. Exposure adjusts the intensity of the effect. A higher amount will result in a dramatic effect, while a lower amount produces a more subtle change. And that's it. You now know how to use this smudge, blur sharpen, and dodge burn tools. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider subscribing for more awesome content. Let us know if you found this tutorial helpful by liking this video and leaving us a comment. Thanks for watching.